So you got close to him. And this was in the midst of you two getting closer as, quote, friends. But you Mm -hmm. were doing it for a reason. I did. And I will tell you, I would lay my life on the line to help protect, especially a child, anyone that, you know, is in need. It's just my natural instinct to dive right in. But it for what I had to do and what I was subjected to hearing is nothing in comparison to what these children go through. It's so disturbing. We, my producer, Natasha, cut a bunch of clips from the show, Mm -hmm. 80% of which we're not going to run. It's too dark. It's too disturbing. And we talk about dark things sometimes on this show. Too dark, too disturbing. In the context of the film, it's okay. It, It works and you need it to be in there. In the context of this interview, it would be too too much for people to hear these actually just dark graphic desires of Jared as spoken to you. I mean, you're the reason we have them. But we'll play a couple, enough so the audience gets it. But you went through a lot having to hear that. It's like stumbling upon child pornography. Like, imagine if you stumbled upon a magazine of child pornography just as you're cleaning your house and and reading the most vile, disgust. That's what you were forced to endure in these conversations with him. It was even worse than that, Megan. Um, The fact is, is that he was telling me what he was doing, what he did, the children's reactions. And one thing that was not, there's a number of things that were not um, revealed, addressed in the docuseries. There's only three hours out of five years, 24 seven work that I had been able to acquire. Uh, So there's more to it. Um, of course, but there's there's a difference when when what you see in a magazine and a story that you read, then when somebody is telling you what they're doing and the reaction, and there oh he was he actually defined how he was grooming the children, which ultimately led to the rewriting of the playbook for uh, profiling pedophiles within the FBI. Mm. Right. And the grooming is all over the news, that word these days. And I mm-hmm. confess it was looming large in my own mind as I watched the docuseries because you hear some of it in his exchanges with you, what he wants you to do to help get children, you know, in his mind, ready for to visit him. Of course, this would never happen. And you were, of course, working with the FBI. But it is it was illuminating. And I think we can draw some lessons from it, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because I want to lay the foundation first. So you decide to start befriending him. But as you point out, it's more of a honeypot operation, like lure him in. He was obviously mm-hmm. attracted to you and um, get him to start talking, get him to say more about the hot middle schoolers. But you didn't know whether he would. I mean, it's tough to know whether that was a passing comment. And he's just a weird guy or this is an actual pedophile and he's going to actually confess it to me, a public figure. So how confident were you that you could get him to do that? Uh, Well, I wasn't very, it wasn't about confidence, to be honest with you. It was just about strategy, uh, what to say, how to say it. But really what he was saying to me wasn't what he wanted to do. He described in, in such detail what he did and the responses from the children, their reactions, what they would say, um, how to be able to uh, really wade through and find the, the right specific child, which was typically from a, you know, from a broken family, um, possibly have some kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, mental health issues, um, depression or, or otherwise. I mean, he wanted the weak to prey on. Mm. You start just using your dictaphone, been there, sister. I was that person too many years ago (laughs) before we had the iPhone. I was a lawyer back then. But yeah, you started to tape him using a dictaphone. And the vast majority of your relationship was over the phone, right? Like where was home base for him? You you were in Florida and he was where? Well, his home is in Indianapolis. Or was was, in Indianapolis. Um, So... That's his home base, and that. But he traveled so much. I mean, majority of the time, he was always on the road, and not just in the United States. He was abroad, um, in a number of other countries, and 
he would be on the phone with me and I would be on the other on the other end of the phone and I could hear the crowds and the excitement. Oh, you're the subway guy, um, the kids screaming. He said to me once that he was as popular as Michael Jackson in Australia. You know what's crazy? The docuseries does a good job of showing that he really was. I, I lived it. I was a human on this earth at the time. Everyone knew him. I knew him. But he was hugely popular. It was beyond your normal, oh, there's that guy from the ad. He became just ubiquitous. He was everywhere. He was Subway. He was in every ad. I mean, like, was it 300 ads for Subway? Yes, I believe so. He was just an everyday, ordinary guy. And people really supported him because of his quick rise to stardom and for losing weight and, you know, doing his diet uh, with specific sandwiches from Subway. So it was like, you know, for the average person, for anyone really looking at him, he was just like an all American hero because of how he reached, you know, that level of stardom. And then the, the, the movie points out, he made millions. I mean, he became very rich, very famous, well-traveled, beloved, with a lot of access to power players. So all of this happened over the course of some 15 years. And I think that's about the, the span, mm-hmm. all based on that one article in his um, University of Indiana, where he was going to school and lost 245 pounds in a year by eating two Subway sandwiches a day. And they did an article on him. Subway heard about it, made him their spokesperson, and boom, off to the races. So you're in the midst of this phone relationship with him, and he is starting to say incriminating things. So the first time, this was something that was unclear to me from watching the series. He made the comment about the middle schoolers. Then you're on the phone with him, and you can hear in that last clip I played how it's getting kind of sexy between the two of you. But then and you were clearly in some of the clips trying to push it to like, so on the kids subject, because you were on a mission, mm-hmm. how hard was it to extract the admissions that you would ultimately get from him in that, in that well, phone relationship? It was interesting because it, it was a phone relationship because I was never allowed during the time that I enlisted with the FBI to meet with him in person, although I wanted to because I felt as though that the case could move, you know, much more swiftly and I could gain, you know, uh, deeper information, um, more hands on, if you will. And he it it was to me baffling that somebody would entrust another person with a phone conversation as a relationship and Mm. share in detail everything that he did. When I think about it, I'm thinking perhaps he was lonely, didn't have, um, because he was so busy with his schedule at Subway, he really didn't have time to make friends. And he was, he had his friends, but not being all over the world, anyone that he could trust like that. So perhaps it was just something that a necessity for him. Some people take CBD for better sleep or less stress or more calm. Some take it for pain relief, better energy, or better focus and concentration. Today, I want to tell you about CB Distillery, and there are over 2 million satisfied customers. According to a poll of their customers, 90% reported they do sleep better with CBD. 81% say CBD helps with stress, and 80% say CBD helps with aches and pains after physical activity. If you struggle to get a good night's sleep, If you're dealing with too much stress and you could use a little calm in your life, if you suffer with pain and discomfort, especially after physical exercise, you could give CBD a try from cbdistillery.com. Use my 20% discount by visiting cbdistillery.com and enter my initials MK for your discount. No prescription required. That's cbdistillery.com, promo code MK for 20% off, cbdistillery.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.